Welcome back everybody to another Python tutorial. Uh, so this, this is the start of a new series. So this is where we're gonna dive into data structures. So data structures are a very important concept if you're ever planning to go and interview for you know, a software position, you know, basically a lot of different programming division um, positions. Uh, they require you to understand uh, different types of data structures, how they work, their performance portfolio, things along uh, that nature, how to build them, and how to do different types of operations on those particular data structures, and really when to use which ones and when not to use which ones. So the first one that we're going to talk about is probably one of the most simple ones, and it's called linked list. So what is a linked list? list. Well, a linked list is simply a collection of elements. We call them nodes. And each one of these nodes has two different components. And you know, I have a nice little visual right here. It's basically made up of two different things. The first thing is a value. So this could be a number, could be a string, a boolean, could be a lot of different data types. And then along with that node, there's a second piece of information, which is a pointer. That pointer is going to point to the next node in the list. And what we'll find is that by having this pointer, we can make this list a little bit more dynamic. Because with certain things like arrays, we usually have to take a chunk out of memory, and usually in sequence, and we have to store information there. With a linked list, uh, it's, it's very efficient with its memory. It only takes the amount of memory that it needs to build the list. And more importantly is it doesn't have to take it all in sequence. So it can have one piece of memory here. It could have one piece of memory over here. And all it does is it has that pointer point to that other location in memory, which then contains the second node in that linked list. So like I've said, a linked list is just a collection of nodes. And so we can visualize it like this, where we have each individual node, where again, one node has a value, the second component is the pointer. That pointer points to the next node, and then so on and so on until you get to the end of the linked list, which basically has nothing in it. And so, <clears throat> why would you want to use a linked list? You know what? You know we have arrays. We have these wonderful things called arrays. Why would we want to use a linked list? Well, there's some advantages to using a linked list. So, for the first part, is they are dynamic, which means they can grow and shrink at runtime by allocating or deallocating memory. And so that actually is really nice because it will only take uh, as much memory as it needs at runtime. And so if it only needs you know, five pieces of memory to store however much information, it's gonna do that at runtime. And so <clears throat> we don't have to define an initial size of that particular linked list. Now, if you've used VBA like we have in previous videos, you will notice that when we declare arrays, we have to normally declare in advance how much memory it's planning to use. And that's usually defined by the number of elements we're planning to put in our array. With a linked list, we don't have to do that. We can grow and shrink that linked list as we're uh, basically running our program, which is really cool. We'll also find that linked list have uh, insertion and deletion operations that are easier than with arrays. So with an array, if I want to insert a value, I would have to, you know, maybe I want to put it right here or something like that. I would have to move both of these uh, nodes down one and then insert it here. What we can do with a linked list is we can actually insert a node here. And all we do is we have this node point to the node that we insert and then the node that we inserted point to the next one. And so that's really advantageous because we're not really having to do any shifting we're just going to simply change where that pointer is pointing to. So right now it's pointing to this node, but if I insert one here, we can have that node point to this one, and then the node here point to that one. And so we haven't done any shifting. We're simply pointing to different nodes in our linked list. Um, another advantage is it doesn't really waste memory, meaning that it only takes the memory needed to store all the nodes. On the other side, arrays can take up more memory than needed. For example, if we you know, declare an array to store six values, but we only put four values in it, we're basically wasting memory because we've declared an array that stores six values, but we're only putting four in there. So we're basically wasting those two other placeholders in that array. Uh, just to be clear though, <laughs> 
That doesn't mean a linked list uses less memory, it just means it uses memory more efficiently. And with the linked list, we'll actually see that it actually takes up more memory because now we have two different components that we have to store in memory, a value and a pointer. So that's very important to understand. It's not necessarily you it's not necessarily using less memory, it's just using that memory more efficiently. Uh, there are some disadvantages to using a linked list. Uh, accessing a node is actually pretty time consuming. The reason why is, well, if I want to find any element in my particular linked list, I have to start at the first node and then traverse till the end or until I reach the, uh, the element that contains the value that I'm looking for. So if I'm looking for eight, I have to start at 15, go to 35, and then go to eight. And so it can take up to the number of elements in our linked list. Now, that's again kind of the worst case. Uh, in the best case, you know, maybe we're looking for the first element and then, hey, we, we find it instantly. Basically, it's the first element we go. But again, on average, it's going to be a linear, uh, <clears throat> sorry, search time. Uh, it also does take up more memory. That is another disadvantage. Um, and this is just referring back to the fact that a linked list is made up of nodes and that node has a pointer and a value. So you're basically storing two components for each node. So it does take up more memory than a typical array. And then just a performance metric for you. Uh, <clears throat> basically with a linked list, uh, when it comes to inserting, it has constant time. Uh, delete is constant. And then uh, searching is O of N. And so this is really useful when it comes to understanding the performance uh, structure of our particular linked list. It does come in handy uh, just because normally in interviews they want to understand, you know, do you understand how this algorithm does perform when you use it and what is the worst case and what is the best case. And then the more realistic one, what is the average case? Because on average that is what the result you're going to get. Okay, so now that we have at least a little bit of an understanding of how linked lists work, let's start building the components we need in order to create one. And so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to build something called a node. And so our node is going to be a class object, and then we're going to take that class object and we're going to use it in another class object called linked list. And so from here, let's create a new class. We'll call it node. That will be an object. And then uh, when we initialize a new node, it's going to have two pieces of information. It's going to have a piece of data and it's going to have a next node. And so the next node is basically pointing to the next node in the linked list. And so what we'll do is we'll say define double underscore init. So when we initialize it, take the class itself. Right now data will be set to none. And basically what that is, um, until we get a piece of data, it just needs to be set to none, just like next node. Uh, until we actually have a node to point to, we're just going to set next node equal to none. In other words, there's nothing to point to. Okay, and so what we'll do is we'll say, okay, we'll set self.data equal to data, so the piece of data that we pass through. And then we will set self.next node equal to next node. And, you know, you, you probably will see a lot of people do this. They'll just put next. Again, it's just naming conventions. I prefer to use next node. I just think for me, that's just how I recognize it. I don't know why. Okay. And so with our node object, we want it to be able to do a couple different things. The first thing is, well, if it has a piece of data, we do want a mechanism to get that piece of data if I so choose. So I want to be able to get that piece of data. Um, there's different ways we can do it. So one is we can actually call the uh, data property itself or we can define a method that will return the data. And so either way really works fine, but just to give you kind of different ways of doing it, we could define a method, we'll call it get data. It will take the node itself. And then what we'll do is we'll say, hey, just return the node data property. And just like that, it will return the node. And so to give you an idea, we'll just do node one, and that will equal node. And then we will say, we'll put in, you know, 50 or something like that and say, then I want node one, uh, get data. You can see right here, it returns 50. Now I could also 
do that, I could just call the data property and it works just as fine. So really up to you. Again, in this situation, there's not kind of really a bad way to do it. Okay, but in the situation where we have a node that actually has a link to somewhere else, what would we do in that situation? Well, that's why I wanna grab the node that comes after the node that I'm currently on. Well, a couple things have to first happen. First, we have to set the node, so we have to actually set a node next to it, and then um, once it does have a node next to it, we wanna be able to grab that node. And so what we'll do, is we'll define two more methods. We'll say get next, that will again take the node itself. And then with this one, we're gonna return self.next node. Okay, and so that one's gonna return the next node. And then we have another one, which is we want to set the next node. So once we get something, we might wanna pass through a new node. And what we'll do is we'll set the self.next node equal to new next. And so <clears throat> how would this look? Well, it's not too complicated. Um, what we'll do is we'll basically define two nodes. And then from here, we'll actually just use that to, um, you know, basically uh, grab the next one. But that's really for our, our linked list component. At this point, um, I just want you to kind of see that this is how, these are basically the methods we need in order to basically build our node object. So we want a node, it's gonna be defined by two pieces of information. One is a piece of data and one is a pointer to the next node. And then that node has three things it can do. It can get the data that is in the node. It can get the next node in the linked list and it can also set the next node. So it can set the pointer so that way it points to the next node in our linked list. So here we are defining our node object. Okay, so we have a node. Now we need to create a linked list. How do we do that? Well, we're going to define a new class object, and this one is going to be called linked list. Again, it will take an object. And then from here, what are a couple things that we want to define about our particular linked list when we initialize it? Well, some of this will make sense down the road, but at this point, what we're gonna say is our linked list can have two different pieces of information. It can have a starting point and an ending point. Now, if I go back to my little image, this would be considered my, my starting point, and then this would be my ending point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say define double underscore init. I'm gonna pass through the linked list itself and I'm gonna define the head to be none. The head will be our starting point, and then we'll define the end to be none as well, because when we initialize it, it's not gonna have anything there. So we're not gonna be able to really set anything. We're just saying, hey, at some point, my list will have a beginning and it will have an end. And so what we'll do is we'll define the head to be just be uh, the head itself, and then we'll also define the end to be the end that we pass through as well. And so. Uh, when we initialize a linked list, it will have a head and an end. And when we initialize it, it will be set to none. Okay, so we have a linked list. Something we probably want to do with this linked list is insert a node to it. And we'll see, we can insert a node in different points. We can insert it in the front of our linked list. We can insert it in the end of our linked list, or we can insert it in the middle of our linked list. Let's start with the front because that's just easiest. So what we'll do is we'll define a new method. We'll call it insert front. We'll take the linked list itself and then we'll pass through this data parameter. So I'm assuming maybe I'm gonna pass through a number and I wanna store that number in that linked list. So when we do this, what do we have to do? Well, we've gotta do a couple things. First, we've gotta create a new node because that node is gonna contain a pointer and the piece of data that we're passing through. And then we need to set the next uh, basically, we need to set the next node when we've created a new one. And then from there, um, we can also define the head of our linked list because if we're inserting it to the front, we are assuming that this will be the head of our linked list. So we'll first define a new node. And that's pretty straightforward. We'll create a new variable, call it new node. It will be a node class object where we pass through our data. Now, remember up here, did it just like that. I didn't pass through a next node in this situation just because really I don't have anything to point to, but um, 
what we'll see next is that the, the second node will be actually the old uh, first one. And so what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll basically take our new node and that will equal, well, we'll sorry, we'll call the set next method equal to the self.head. Well, right now there's nothing there, there's just none. And so the next one will basically be pointing to, you guessed it, nothing. So here, set the second node to equal the old first one. That's kind of how I like to think about it. And then um, we gotta reset the head. And so the new head will be the new node. And so we'll say self.head equals new node. Alrighty, so what should we do? Let me get my notes. Uh, insert, insert. I mean, you probably can guess what we're kind of gonna do. Alrighty. So let's do this. Uh, we'll do this. Um, I'm gonna insert a cell below. I'm gonna create a linked list that will equal a linked list object. And what we'll do <clears throat> is we will call our linked list and we'll call the insert insert front, we'll pass through 35, and then we will pass through, uh, what is the next one? What do I have in the next one? Uh, 37, okay. And so what we'll do here, uh-oh. Oh, I forgot the T on it, that was my bad. Okay, so we've inserted some new nodes, and so now I should be able to, if I call the head property, you can see that it does return a node. And if I call the data property, we can see that the insert in the front was 37. And initially you might go, wait a minute, I thought that was the second one we inserted. Keep in mind, I am inserting in the front. And so it's gonna take the old one and uh, push it uh, further down. Now what I could do is I could actually call the next property and I could then call the data property. Uh, where is it? Oh, sorry. Uh, what is it? Head, get next. Okay, my bad, my apologies. Uh, 35, and so I did next. It wasn't supposed to be next. You're supposed to be doing uh, get next. So that's gonna get the, uh, the next node. Um, Technically, I could also uh, do the next node property as well, and that was fine. So on the first one, I, I kind of screwed it up a little bit. I did next. I don't have a next property. I have a next node property. And so if I do that, it will return 35, or I could also call the get next uh, method and then call the data property, and then it will return the data of the next node. Okay, so... With that being said, this is kind of, I would say, the end of the first video. What we're gonna see in the next video is we're gonna see how we can insert values at different points in our linked list. And then I think we're gonna also try to do searching, if I remember correctly. I have to, I'm trying to keep the video short. I don't wanna keep it too long, but I think we're gonna do searching uh, as the second one. So if you have any questions about kind of what we covered at this point, please put them down in the comments below and I will try to get back to you. Also, if you could, please make sure to like the video. We always appreciate support. And if you're not already, please make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you get regular updates as we release new videos. So thank you again for watching, everybody. We will see you in the next video.